Hi, welcome. Hello, and uh, welcome to this webinar today, the spiritual development. And in this episode, we have Jamie Stankowski of Shaman Soul Healing. And I met Jamie last autumn equinox. We were at a mind, body, spirit event in Durham, North Carolina. And we were both vendors at this event and it, we connected and I ended up um, updating her website, shamansoulhealing.com. And our connection from there has just continued to unfold and blossom. Uh, Jamie lives in Cary, North Carolina, which is about an hour from where I currently live. So I'm really blessed to be living close to her. Um, and I absolutely love seeing the sites that Jamie visits on her shamanic journeys. Um, she's really deeply committed to her path and is doing really great work on herself and with other people. And I had a, the pleasure of doing a photo shoot with Jamie for her website, which meant that um, myself and a friend got to be guinea pigs for some of her lovely healing and um, we got some lovely energy clearing from her and my first experience with some happy. Um, and that was very, very grounding. Um, not particularly pleasant because it felt like my nostrils <laughs> were on fire. But it passes really quickly and Jamie kind of holds you in that experience and helps you to work through it and integrate it. So it, it was, as I said, extremely grounding and centering for me. Um, I do work with Jamie's shamanic healing tea. Um, they come in these really wonderful eco-friendly boxes. It's a loose tea with these wonderful tea bags that you just fill up yourself. When you order it from her website, you'll love the way that she packages it because she, she thinks about it all the way through. She's got very smart packaging. Um, I'll talk a bit more about her tea later. Um, and I also work with her Florida water as well that you can get from her website. I, she's just, her particular blends are um, really powerful and very very um grounding and protective to work with i really enjoy them so you can order your ones from her website um a little bit about jamie's background she was chosen by spirit to become a shamanic practitioner having received the nine rights of the mane k and certified by the medicine world shamanic institute she is a full messer carrier Ushu Reiki master teacher and a physical therapist with 32 years of practice. And she's taken classes with Sandra Ingerman. Now I have to look at, it's the Tita Juanito Chindoy and was initiated into the Mayan shamanism with Quetzal Shah in Mexico. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing no. those right. In fact, I know I'm not pronouncing those right. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed, but I'm sure Jamie can correct me in a minute. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop jibber jabbering on, but I wanted to kind of give that little introduction about this wonderful lady. And so once again, welcome, Jamie. I am so grateful to have you here. I've been really looking forward to having this chat with you. Um, and I, I'd love to hear if you have anything that you'd like to add to that introduction. <laughs> well, I think you about covered it, Frankie. It's good. <laughs> and, and happy Earth Day today. Absolutely. Right and back at you, sister. Very fitting because shamans are known as the Earth Keepers. So it's a good day to be doing this interview. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to add that I do... Um, natural healing techniques. Um, I teach people self-healing techniques and I've recently started um, channeling spirit for myself and others among a bunch of other things. <laughs> that, that <Right>. I, <laughs> yeah, like a toolbox. Yeah, <laughs> it's getting bigger. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I uh, am really excited to learn more about how your shamanic journey began 
Oh, you want the long story or the short story? Oh, we definitely want it all. Whatever you're willing to share, basically. <laughs> okay, so I was, um, let me start with this. I feel like spirit, you know, tap, they're very gentle. Tap you on the shoulder, come this way, come this way, come this way. Well, I wasn't listening. <laughs> so I got my, what I lovingly call my cosmic bitch slap from the universe. <laughs> Got the kick in the arse, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. And I was in such inner turmoil about a situation I was going through in my life that I physically manifested hives. And I had hives from my waist all the way to my head, all on my face. And I, I knew it was coming from inside of me. And I was meditating at the time. I had been meditating for a couple of years. And I was getting messages. I didn't know at the time there were messages, but I kept hearing the word Reiki, Reiki, Reiki. I'm like, okay, I kind of know what that is, but I don't really know what that is. So let me go find somebody to do Reiki on me because if I'm supposed to be doing this, I, got, I need to experience it. So I found a girl close by that did a session on me, but she also happened to be a psychic, which I didn't know. And she... Uh, had wonderful messages for me, but she said, I think you need to be a shaman. Do you know what that is? I'm like, yeah, kind of. Don't they like have a rattle and do the drum? She goes, yeah, kind of. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but I don't believe that. I'm not doing any of that stuff. But I was, I'm telling you, I was hurting so bad inside, just so much turmoil on the inside that I had to find some. So I Googled shamans, <clears throat> found one close by, went and had a soul retrieval. I felt some relief. And then I got a little bit curious about it. And um, so I began training with her. And I remember the first class, um, because I'm very, very, very left brain. I, I, I analyze everything. And the first class we had, we were doing like some illuminations and stuff. And this girl, there was four people in the, in the course. And she said, oh, I just saw a jaguar jump up on the table. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I thought, this stuff, I can't do this stuff. Nobody sees jaguars jumping up on the table. I'm not doing this. It's too woo-woo for me. And I said, I'm not doing this anymore. Well, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so there. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, uh, it's funny because I literally had, the conversation with my husband the other day that a lot of this work is not it's not like I set out to choose to do any of this you know it life experiences yeah. have guided me this way like I wasn't into ETs I wasn't into working with sacred feminine I didn't even know what a mandala was yeah. and wasn't interested in any of them either yeah. until everything obviously starts to unfold and uh yeah well, you know you did choose it at a higher level <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah uh, whether i mean i another one of the things that i say regularly is i'm fairly certain i was drunk before i signed up <laughs> for this <laughs> probably <laughs> i, I I just can't believe that I knew all of this and I, I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll go do that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I know that there's a higher part of ourselves that knows what's best for us. And when we start really listening to those intuitions and that voice within ourselves, which usually comes from meditating and, you know, learning about energy and stuff. Yeah. That voice starts to get stronger in everybody, um, and we're, we're, it's, it's not only us. It could be uh, literally anyone who, who gives yeah. their time to it. Crazy, it's been there the whole time. We just weren't tuned into it. Right, right. We couldn't hear it because of all the stuff that's going on in our heads. Right. Get that part out of the way, which is still hard. <laughs> A lot of time. Absolutely, yeah. Lifelong endeavor some days I'm really good at it some days I'm like trying my best but you know mm -hmm. it's just an ongoing practice it's great so um what's the shamanic journey about for you I mean there may be people watching that I don't even know what 
a shaman is or what that even entails or, or whatever. But And I know that everybody's interpretation of the journey is, is unique as well. So Yeah, well, shamans live with one foot in this world and one foot in the spirit world. And the shamanic journey is about uh, sacred reciprocity. So we live in harmony and balance with the earth and believe everything's sacred that comes from the earth because Pachamama, who's Mother Earth, gives us everything that we need. She provides for us. And so therefore we must provide for her and we need to nurture and protect our life. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. Um, I love, uh, Graham Hancock is an author that I love a lot. And actually I discovered ayahuasca through his book, Supernatural. Yeah. He was a BBC journalist back in the day. So, I, love uh, love. Huh? I love him. Good, good. Yeah. Cause he's like, he, he could be my dad. I mean, I absolutely, I just, he's so real. And, um, he really he was the one that really plant, planted the seed about that and taught me a little bit about shamans and um one of the things that really stuck with me was him saying that you know a shaman is someone who is dealing with being in, in an altered state of consciousness right. how how they get there is down to the individual some want to drum into the altered state and dance others want to do the plant medicines other ones want to go for the um, the pilgrimages through uh, forests or mountains or whatever. Um, there's many different ways of being able to get into that altered state, but the common thread is that all of these shamans are doing that. Right, right. And it's important to say, because we're going to discuss plant medicines in a minute, but it's yeah. important to say that you know, you don't have to go to Peru or Costa Rica or to another country to experience the altered states of consciousness. You can, you can get there through meditation. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I, um, yeah, I believe that. I, mean, I, I believe that if you're supposed to go to Peru or to some other location, then that's exactly where you end up going. But um, yeah, that's the great thing about this is that you, you don't have to go anywhere or have any particular tools. You just need yourself and that, that commitment and choice to, to start the journey, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's talk about some of these amazing plant medicines that the shamans are working with. My favorite subject. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I have had the absolute honor of working with ayahuasca in the past. And for me, it, it was life changing at a cellular level. I, I really feel like I want to share that it, I it looked for about six years before I actually had this experience. Yeah. I was learning about the plants. I was learning about the shamans. I was waiting for my time to come for the right people because one of the things Graham Hancock impressed upon me was, you know, this isn't playing around. You need people who can hold space for you, people who know what they are doing, um, and you will get the most out of it. Um, and, I, and, yeah, that whole whole experience that I've, I've had with the plant medicines and I still feel them you feel them off, long after yeah. you have ingested them they're they're part you of you forever you feel them before they before you but yes 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 in fact my I felt that brew I think I told you when they were making uh the brew maybe a few days before we were supposed to drink it I started actually well, with my eyes open, not hallucinating, but it was like trippy. Everything was really, really trippy. And I could feel the medicine talking to me and calling me. Um, yeah. It, 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 it's, I'm getting chills when you're saying. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's beautiful. It's absolutely yeah. beautiful. But I was so prepared. I mean, I was prepared and ready to face whatever it was that I needed to face um to to learn and experience something and, and my mandalas were born out of the plant medicines yeah. um lots has been born out of them yeah. but um so yeah i i'm i'm not going to go on about my experience i really want to hear about 
um, some of the, the medicines that you like to work with and what you're learning through them? Well, I like all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now, ayahuasca is, is uh, not pleasant tasting at all. And every time I do it, I think, oh, it, I taste it. And I'm like, what did I just do? Right. You know, as soon as you're in, you're in it. You you can't go back. There's no going back, and that's a good eight to ten hour journey. You're getting ready. To go. <laughs> yeah. We lay down, lay down, and and surrender and give up because she's gonna have her. She's gonna have her way with you, right? Right. right. Yeah. Um. Um. I like I like ayahuasca, San Pedro mushrooms there's iboga which i've never done um that's a medicine out of africa africa right um combo which is a frog venom and they burn that into um either your arm or your neck and that's purgative and that's really good for getting rid of um digestive issues and energetic energetic issues as well um and then sapito is dmt that you smoke and that's a nice short journey, which is about 20 minutes. <laughs> so, you, and that one, um, I've not done that one either. I don't have enough courage to do that one yet. <laughs> it feels a little fast and intense. I haven't been as drawn to yeah. doing it that way. And, you know, I'm, I, I haven't experienced it, so I haven't really got an opinion. I just haven't particularly felt drawn to it. I like that the iOS grew is a little more of a longer journey. Yeah, they call her the mother because she's um, more gentle, which to my journey, my very first <laughs> was not gentle at all, at all. In fact, the next day we were doing it four nights in a row. I was in Costa Rica and I told the shaman that next morning because we were in ceremony from um, like seven at night to like nine in the morning. And <clears throat> it was, I died like, 52 times and I remember like saying, how many times can somebody die? And he was like, you're dying. And I told him when we were walking out of ceremony, I said, I've wasted my money coming here because I will not be coming back. And he said, see how you feel tonight. And it took probably seven counselors at the place I was at to talk me into going back in that night because it was so hard. But the next three nights were beautiful. So it was, it, it's, it's the hardest work I've ever done on myself. And people are I like, you. oh, you're going to Costa Rica. You're going to have so much. Did you have fun? I'm like, no, I didn't know. I didn't have any fun. <laughs> I didn't even get to see the beach. <laughs> I was doing some inner work. It's hard. It's hard work. And you have to know, you know, that after you do, there's a lot of preparation, preparation, preparation beforehand you know you have a dieta right. there's certain things you can and can't do you can't have sex you know there's a lots lots of um energetic things that have to be done beforehand and mother ayahuasca teaches you things in ceremony and it's up to you to implement them when you come back and you, know, you can go drink the medicine and just come back and, and just do the same old stuff you've always done and nothing's going to change right so you have to be committed to the inner work with, with ayahuasca. Yeah. 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 I and really believe that. Cause I, I mean, I, like I said, it was, it absolutely changed me at a silly level. I came back and all these habits that I used to have were gone. Yeah. They were just gone. I mean, yeah. I used to, one of the things that stands and it's going to sound silly to other people, but I used to drink English tea all the time. My whole life, like my nana used to give me pots of tea with milk in it and I would drink tea all day long, like water. And so I stopped doing that for the dieta beforehand. Right. And when I came back, I put that tea in my mouth and it tasted disgusting, like yeah. bleach. Yeah. And I've never, ever, ever touched a proper English cup of tea since. So now you drink um, American tea now? <laughs> no, I'm no, I no, I am having I go for the more organic blends. I'm just more conscious of what I am selecting now. And that milk black heavy caffeinated tea combo, obviously she didn't think that was good. <laughs> so she yeah. uh, and that's just one one. I mean, I never went back to the, the diet that I used to have. I never went yeah. back to so many different uh habits it's it's unbelievable and it was just 
just all part of it. I didn't even have to force it. I just changed. No, I know you, you know, you have to cut out caffeine beforehand and mm -hmm. I have not had a, a, anything caffeinated and coffee. I haven't had coffee in three and a half years. Mm -hmm. and I only drink herbal tea now and I, and, and, you know, I just, I just stay with the diet that, that we had to do before ayahuasca. So I don't do dairy my whole, I'm, I'm vegan and raw and vegetarian now. Mm -hmm. Um, some eggs sometimes, and sometimes I eat a piece of pizza if it looks really good, but other than that, <laughs> um, yeah, everything's changed and it, and it, and it was pretty effortless. You know, yeah. you just don't want it anymore. Right. Yeah. And so you, and now you kind of you learn to listen to your body and like you, your body's like yeah I don't want that anymore and it's actually you know, pretty easy. To right. Things. And, and one of the things that I thought was you know having put gone on that diet, having done all of that in the work, why go back? <laughs> you know, after everything that you've gone through, it's like why would you undo it? You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, and it's important to, we'll talk about the shamans in a minute while we, we need to have them in ceremony. Um, the rapé they, they do before ceremony as well, which I have a sacred relationship with now. I actually do it just about every morning to ground myself and connect with the spirit because it helps you connect with, um, your spirit guides or your, their higher self. And like every time I do it, I can feel it. You know, you set your intention um, to be for healing. And so I'm, and I don't know if anything in me needs to be healed, but I expect that Rape does and, and spirit does. So I just say, go do what you got to do and heal what needs to be healed. And it's grounding and it sets the tone for the day. So I meditate in the morning and do a Rape ceremony. And can you imagine doing that every day? <laughs> as bad as it <laughs> I cannot, I cannot. But I mean, at the same time, I, I, I do understand the, the ritual of it. And, yeah. you know, that's what you're doing now. It might not be what you need in six months time. You know, yeah. it, it might be different. So uh, it's maybe what you need for now. Here's the pipe we used with you and Marina. Yep. Yeah. I am actually, because I was thinking about that and I've got some pictures, so I am going to um, put those up on the screen for us to see some of those lovely photo shoot pictures we did of you doing the ceremony with us. This is the self-applicator, so this is the one that I use, and that's the ayahuasca vine. Beautiful. Beautiful, isn't it? Yes. I got this one in Peru. Um, I, I got both of those in Peru, actually. Um, but it's really important to have a shaman present when you're doing any of the, the plant medicines, you know, in the U S they call them psychedelics and I guess they are classified as psychedelics, but it, the medicines take your ego away out of the picture. So you can actually see what's going on. Cause what, what we see right here is only about 20% of what, of what, right. yeah. And so if you, when your ego is out of the way, then you can really see what's going on. So, the shamans um, uh, infuse prayers in the in the medicine, and um, they sing ikaros, which are sacred songs. It's actually the plants coming through the shamans and singing in their healing songs, and they know how to c control the energies in in the room. Right, right. So it's really important. You know, there's people that are 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 getting it online and doing it at home, and I've actually had a couple of clients that told me they had ordered some online and they felt some bad energies coming in and, and they were having trouble. So they came to me to try to get rid of them. And so it's really, really important to have. It really is. I mean, I, I just have got so much respect for it that, and I understand that it is a medicine and all medicines need assistance of some kind of a doctor. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, these shamans know exactly what they're doing. I'd shared with you um, something that really had an impact on me. I guess I was working through some daddy issues or whatever <laughs> through one of my journeys. And it was hard. Whatever it was, it was like all oh, this masculine energy that I was trying to 
understand. And I, I was crying and whimpering. We're all, there's like 12 of us in a dark room. So no one can actually see each other. Right. And I'm whimpering and other people are making a lot of noise. So I'm not imagining that anyone could really hear me because I wasn't wailing. But one of the shamans uh, came over to me and he began singing. Yeah. And he was playing his music. He was using, smudging me with his herbs. And I could feel him helping me work through it. Yeah. There, he didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. But he knew in the pitch black what song to sing, what herbs I needed. And I could feel, even though I didn't know what I was letting go of, I clearly didn't need to, but I, he- I felt him help me through that. Yeah. And, um, and that's, yeah. Beautiful. He, I mean, I'm, going to, I'm eternally grateful to him. Yeah. I mean, he's, he healed all my daddy issues. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I can say in that moment. He helped me shift all that, so I don't carry any of that anymore. And um, and and I just know that you can work through so much more when you have that support, and you're very open um, when you take these medicines. And whether you believe it or not, you know there is good and bad, there is light and dark, and you know it matters where you are and how safe yeah. and protected you are to the visible and invisible worlds. The shamans are creating this wonderful container for you that, that lasts veil long. Yeah, veil yeah. of protection in the That's, whole ceremony area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I know, you know, that the shamans that I work with, you know, they had talked to me beforehand do you definitely know the deal with this? What's your kind of intentions behind this? They, they made sure that I was, knew what I was going into, you right. know? Not scaring me off, just checking in with me, which I really appreciated, and also checking in with me afterwards as well. So we spoke did, maybe. Did they help you with integration? All the stuff you learned help you integrate it because you know the work. <clears throat> the work really starts when you get home. It's right the beginning. Um, and so there's. They didn't lot- help me all the way through it. Yeah. They in I think it was like a week or so after you have a call with them and you get to kind of share anything and they they are always there if you need yeah. to reach out to them. I I just didn't. I felt like I had. I had enough support from mm. them and it was, God, I mean, it felt like it was a good year of integrating, to be fully honest, you know. It, if not, I still feel like it's ongoing, you know, and I haven't even been back in years to do it. So, yeah. you know, uh, it's just really important to to have that guidance and support and uh that safety doing it and as somebody who has used psychedelics for social reasons as a younger person and being able to compare the experiences now they're like not even comparable I mean you have a good night when you when you do any kind of psychedelics but you're not learning much from it you're not healing yeah, if you if you do it with the right intention and the, the intention of healing instead of just partying, you're going to have right. a, a totally different experience. Yeah. Right. And those intentions really are. I mean, they really do set, set the stage. I feel like every intention I had got met and exceeded beyond anything, you know. Um, but I was clear about, you know, what I wanted to let go of, experience, invite, um, all of it. So um, that I think that really helped me to benefit so much from it in so many different areas. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so yeah, I definitely make sure that you're, you're, you've got a shaman to do this work with. It's, you just won't get as much out of it if you don't so I mean it's 
it's everybody's own call, but my personal opinion is you're going to get so much more yeah. of an experience when yeah. you're being held. Absolutely. There's also a, a medicine that I work with called Sananga, which is an eye drop um, made out of sacred plants in the Amazon. And some of the, there's some tribes in Brazil that actually use it before ayahuasca ceremonies. Um, but it's a really strong, it's crazy how an eye drop can heal you. But the first time I did it, now you think rough hay burns? <laughs> oh, they burn your eyeballs out. Ooh, I was pretty sure I was going to be blind the first time. And I, I probably screamed for, for 15 minutes. I mean, really? I screamed, yeah. And um, the guy that was helping me through, helping me through this journey. Um, I mean, I cried, I cried for sobbed, like sobbed from my soul for 20 minutes. And he said, that is some deep healing. I was like, yeah. <laughs> old in there and I don't even know what it was and I just yeah. remember crying and I don't even know I was crying I couldn't stop and but I'm not kidding you for three days after that my feet weren't even touching the ground I was so light everything had been lifted for me it was and it's just amazing I did a ceremony not long ago with a, a girl here um that came to me for some sananga and she um had a lot of energy going through her and cried her and I just held her in my arms. I just held her and held her and held her and she was like shaken. And I thought she was having a seizure. And then I realized it was all this energy trying to come out and it's just from an eye drop. Right. right. And, and so she probably cried for 30 minutes. So I just held her, I just held her like a baby and she, but, but, I wouldn't want to do that by myself. I have some that's not that strong that I do by myself, but the really, really strong one, somebody's going to be with me. Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And um, what was I going to say? One of the things that the plant medicines had actually taught me was that how our healing comes in different ways and to release energy comes in different ways. Yes. So... With right. the ayahuasca, for example, yeah. shit, throw up, yeah. cry your eyeballs out, laughing, not snotty you know. nose, yeah, all of that, <laughs> yawning, that. you know, lots oh, of yawning. Yeah. Again, yeah. that's just yeah. release the energy, release the energy, release the energy. It's, I, I really, I really started to understand because of the plants. It, it showed me, and also it helped show me about exercise helping to do that too that we can also release a lot of energy through just intentional movement yeah. um same thing um so yeah. yeah you know they talk to you like mushrooms taught me a specific way of healing people right. and they, they talk to you i know it sounds crazy people <laughs> but but they do. they do talk to you yeah, they, uh, Graham Hancock calls them little teachers, yeah. <laughs> the mushrooms, and they are, they, they really are, they all have something, uh, some wisdom to share with you, in, uh, just infinite and layers of, of the wisdom, and I really believe that in these ceremonies, you know, so much is happening within those hours, you have no clue, you literally, yeah. you come back with these snippets yeah. of remembrance, yeah. And then as time goes on, you start remembering more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. um, one of my experiences was it was teaching me how much of an empath I was. Mm -hmm. And it did this through, in the beginning, I drank the medicine. I'm hearing my friend's whimper. Yeah. She was crying. And I was thinking, oh. That's Alex, Alex. <laughs> and the medicine was like, no, she's here because she wants to be. She's doing her work, leave her to it. Don't get distracted by someone else's pain. Deal with yourself. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, I could feel the energy of the person near me, a very good friend as well. And I, I could feel a lot of his pain. I could feel all the stuff that he was working through because he was crying. And I swear to God, I spent an eternity in this man's pain. 
Yeah. Because I had turned into him and I, I felt like, I, I know today, I was in this man's pain. I was living his childhood, feeling everything until all of a sudden it was like, you don't have to be here. This yeah. isn't you. Right. This is not for you. This is him. And it, oh, it showed me, you know, yeah. you, you, you allow yourself to go in that and then you lose yourself there. Right. And it helped me to start differentiating all these different feelings I had. I thought all the feelings were mine, right. only to realise that barely any of them are. Right. <laughs> right. You know what's cool, what you said, though, when you said you, th you, you could feel your friend Alex's pain and you threw up? So in, in ayahuasca ceremonies, you can actually throw up for someone else. For someone else, yeah. 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 And I bet I, I bet I did because of, you know, I hadn't learned to sit with my own energy, stop trying to stop absorbing everybody else around you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it really helped my solar plexus a lot. Um, and also finally really realising you are, very empathic and mm. you just need to be more mindful of of all these feelings and thoughts and stuff because it's not yours and you don't have to carry it you know yeah. um, and you know so many people talked about the the amount of psychotherapy that we get uh with these ceremonies as well like lifetimes of psychotherapy in, like in one session years. it's like 11 years of therapy in one night right <laughs> and it's a lot cheaper Yes, yes, yes. And I will share that I remember one, one of my journeys was, you know, she was showing me all the things. It was like she was stripping me back to my essence. Right. And showing me all these different handprints, like all these different people were touching me and they were people throughout my life, family members, teachers, friends and pa parents of friends and everybody that I had ever met or had ever gone near me who had put these, who were moulding me, right. you know, with their beliefs and everything. Yeah. And it, it was amazing that just even people that I didn't think had any kind of impact still had left this print on me. Mm -hmm. And so it was this process of peeling back all of this that I was not to finally get to the core of what I am. Right. And um, that, that was really beautiful. That was beautiful. so beautiful. <laughs> that beats all the times I died. I would have rather, ha would have rather, ha rather have that. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> but she gives you what you need, doesn't she? And, <laughs> you know, I think um, the, the shamanic journey, the journey that you are living because the way I see, I mean, you know, it's a spiritual journey. I, go, I can identify with it because it's every day. It's a way of living. It's a way of being. It's, yeah. it's just a way of, of, of viewing this world. Um, but it is, it's a lifestyle. It's not just something you go and do on a Sunday or whatever. It's in everything that you are and everything that you do. Yeah, yeah. So I think, um, and my, many of the shamans are, you know, like you said, walking between worlds all the time um, and on this really intense journey to be in those two worlds. Um, so I have a deep respect for the shamanic work because it is, it's, it's deep, it can be dark, but um, and not it's all just, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like <laughs> yourself and, and the people that I have worked with as well, a good shaman, they hold you. They hold you so well that it's okay to be in this darkness because they're this light amongst it. Yeah, and, you know, when you're coming to a shaman, you're vulnerable and, and you need to feel safe and especially ayahuasca, you know, with the, the shamans, if you find the right shamans, um, you feel safe. Mm -hmm. And even with the work that I do, the, the few medicines that I do here that are legal 
are legal, not illegal, legal <laughs> <laughs> in the U.S. Um, even those are they're very they're very powerful medicines, and you need to have somebody with you to to hold space. Yeah, yeah. and and it's okay, you know, because you want them to you want to cry, you want them to you got to get it out somehow, you know, whether you cry it out or throw it out, throw it up, or you've got to, you have to get that energy out. Right in order to, to heal, yeah. Definitely. All right, so it's fascinating. I know I could, I could easily talk all, all night about the medicines. <laughs> oh, I could too. <laughs> One of my favorite things to talk about. Yeah, and you were, you were recently in Mexico um, on a journey, weren't you? When was that? Was that the beginning of the year? Yeah, I, I went the day after Christmas and then, um, yes, yeah. And then you hurt your knee. Yeah, I was drug up a mountain on a ho- by a horse with my <laughs> one on the stirrup and the other one on the ground. Oh yeah, that's how I got a slip disc. <laughs> yeah, hurt my knee, but I was um, only on a cane. We did some. Um, the people I were with uh, said because uh, we were halfway up or about three quarters of the way up, and we had to walk another quarter of a mile to get up to. We we're going to see the butterflies where they migrate in oh, um, right. Venezuela. And um, they were like, we can go back down. I'm like, I'm here to see the butterflies. I'm going to see some butterflies. So <laughs> two sticks. And I walked up the mountain. And we actually did some hands-on healing up on top of the mountain. And um, came back. And the next day, we did, I did mega doses of vitamin C, um, some aloe, and some other lotions that a traveling companion had. He got in China. And the animals, there was four dogs and three cats and they came to my leg and just kind of hung out around my knee for a day or so. And I came back to, to North Carolina and was on a cane for less than a week. And then I was back at work and my knee's fine. Awesome. Awesome. The, the doctor in Mexico, um, wanted he wrote a prescription for some um, steroids and some other stuff, and I said, "I'm yeah. not gonna take that." And he said, "Well, you'll feel better." And I'm like, "You can write it, but I'm not taking it." <laughs> so, and I did. Right. Yeah. Good. No, I yeah, I like. Even though it was a bad thing, it was it was nice watching you heal yourself. To be honest, it was just yeah, it was you know, really it's powerful. And yes, because we all have the power to heal ourselves. Right. And, yeah. And the body knows it definitely knows, and it was a good you did the right thing. You know, you went to doctor to you know make sure a bone wasn't broken or something. Um, but if they're only going to give you drugs, then yeah. why bother? Yeah. Yeah. Got my own drugs. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> this journey that you're on, and and having you know, worked with other shamans, met other shamans. Um, What do you think, what message, if any, do you think the ancient shamans would share with us today? This is also very exciting. (laughs) So so shamanism, there's a legend of the eagle and the condor. And it's um, when the eagle, I told you eagle, (laughs) the eagle of the north flies with the condor of the south, the spirit of the land will reawaken. And so that's the, um, that's what's happening now. And because the, the shamans in Peru are now teaching the people from North America their ways and we're helping to spread the word. And so now the eagle and the condor are flying wing to wing. And um, so this is the time of the, the new uh, illuminated people called the homo luminous and um they're the awakened ones and so the the prophecy is now coming true and i'm sure they are all dancing around the fire beating their drums and their rattles very happy i'm telling you my my spine is like tingling and and cold right now and i have got you can't see my goosebumps but i have them (laughs) they're they're like my spine is really cold and yeah. what's interesting, I'll, I'll let people know that when Jamie and I, before we started doing this chat, we just kind of centered ourselves and said our prayers and stuff and 
in my mind's eye, I saw this eagle. And she said, I shared it with her. She said, oh, you understand that at the end. <laughs> well, also, you know, you work with the condor feathers for your energy clearing, right? I do. Because I, I remember you doing that with me and that was, oof, that was powerful. I mean, it felt like the condor was flying next to you. It was amazing. Um, and, yeah, I feel... I feel a connection with you and I feel that there's, there's a lot of work to be done and the universe has put us extremely close together and I know that we've talked about things in the past and I think that they were just seeds that we were planting and yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I feel like there's more unfolding with us. There's more, more work to be done and shared together and um, definitely, yeah, I'm excited about that for sure need yeah. that nice beach retreat i think <laughs> and like, i was thinking about that too i was thinking maybe um i could do the cooking because i like to do the the oh my god that would be amazing yeah. i'd love that I mean, and it's the, it's been coming up a lot lately so it's i i know it's imminent and i know that you're definitely well you're definitely my right hand man for one <laughs> i know that we can make our work collaborate well together yeah. for, for something like that so everybody in north carolina area make sure that you uh keep a lookout because hopefully we'll do wanna, that yeah i want to tell you i've been um connecting with the feminine lately and mm -hmm. i can send you uh the the uh the mantra that i listened to is absolutely beautiful it's sung by a, a beautiful woman out of she's mongolian oh, wow. and, beautiful but i actually dance every morning when i get up out of bed i dance and i can feel it and i've just recently connected with with uh shiva mm -hmm. and goddess, and she's like up here so i can feel her yeah wow yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. wonderful i yeah i i felt that with you too for sure i think um the divine feminine is is stirring in in all of us, and that yeah. wonderful energy we're balancing was felt. I said to somebody the other day that my my masculine energy has always been extremely strong. So oh. for me, working with the feminine was very challenging, actually, and and still is. Um, but it it is rebalancing me a lot yes i can feel it and i was the same as you very left-brained and analytical and i was not balanced at all and i'm telling you i am a man in a, a woman's body oh me too me, me and my husband joke all the time and he'll happily say i am the woman <laughs> she is the man and it's not i mean it just is just it's like we're in completely yeah. we're in the wrong bodies <laughs> but at the same time it works you know so, uh, yeah, and ever since I've kind of been rebalancing that energy and working with it more and working with more women, which was something very difficult for me to do because uh, I think I just had a lot, of, I have a lot of women in my family. <laughs> so it, it put me off. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but I've definitely created a much healthier relationship with it and it's still continuing to unfold and what i love about the priestess work is it's really not that far off the shamanic yeah. work it's yeah. very very close and in fact yeah many priestesses that i've met you could easily call them a shaman you know um, you know we all i mean whether you're reiki or priestess or shaman or whatever whatever you are it's all this work to get to the same it's a means to an end right right and you know and all of them have so many tools that come with them so it's not like any particular thing means that you only do this you know i think they do all you know blend and cross over into each other um, yeah so, like with my work, I mean, I learned Peruvian shamanism, but I've always been fascinated with anything Mayan or anything South America. So I've, you know, made you know many, many, many trips to to Mexico, and which is where I found Quetzalcha, the one that helped me, that initiated me into Mayan shamanism, and uh, I resonate with Tibetan uh, shamanism too. So uh, I pull a lot of stuff 
from right. all of those areas. And I love that. I love that. You make it your own that yeah. way, you know. It just becomes who you are, um, influenced by all these wonderful different cultures and traditions. And, uh, mm -hmm. and that's, yeah, that's kind of what, what I like to do too. It's just uh, there's all these different religions. I take my bit from each one. There's all these different tools. I take my bit, bit from each one. And over the years, it's just unfolding and... And, and yeah, changing and adding to the toolbox all the time. So, um, and, and I think that's, that's what most, most healers are doing. Anyone who's working with energy is doing. So it's wonderful. So yeah, it's been a nice little chat. <laughs> I know I want to see you in person, but I couldn't now anyway because of the virus. I oh, know, I know, but I am, I'm dying. I, isn't it just the way, you know, most of the time I'm completely happy in solitude. And then as soon as I'm told you have to stay home, I'm like, oh, but I want to go out. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I am, I'm missing you. It's been too long. And yeah, as soon as we're able, um, we'll get together. And, and yeah, I feel us doing more, more stuff. So. Thank you so much for you. sharing your lovely energy and wisdom and time with us. I'm so grateful. And um, thank you to anyone who's watching this video right now. Don't forget to check out Jamie's website, shamansoulhealing.com. I will be posting links to her website, her Facebook page, her YouTube channel, um, so that you can find uh, all of her on the social media and everything um and don't forget that she also has some lovely tools tea um she sells sage and uh, san paolo is it yeah palo santo wood yeah um <laughs> and offers all these wonderful services and i know that you know some of them can still be translated to online work with you so um yeah, make sure you keep an eye out for Jamie. And I think you're being interviewed tomorrow for something as well, aren't you? Yeah, it's a radio. <laughs> you're on a radio. And he won't even tell me what we're talking about, so I have no idea how that one's going to go. <laughs> Okie dokes. All right, well, well, we'll keep an eye out for that one. And if we don't see it, we'll know how that went. <laughs> yeah. That one's called, I can't even remember the name of the Cosmic... Cosmic Radio or something like that. Cosmic Radio. Okay. Oh well, I'll keep an eye on your Facebook page. Hopefully, you'll you'll I'll post something up. I'll send you the I'll send you the name of it. I can't remember. Well, I'll send you good juju, good energy for that. I'm I'm sure that uh, whatever you share will be wonderful for that audience. So, mm -hmm. good luck. Thank you. <laughs> All right, darling. Thank you again, and we'll catch up again soon. Okay. Love to you. Love to you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.